Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast. I am your host, Nicole Frolic, and I invite you to cozy up with me each week as I explore all aspects of the spiritual journey, spiritual biohacking, and expanding the mind beyond this reality. Remember that the collective awakening can start by planting one seed. So thanks for being such an amazing audience and sharing these shows with your family and friends. So without further ado, let's jump right into the episode and find out what we're discovering today. Hello, guys. <laughs> How are you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. Um, I don't see anyone in the live chat right now. So <laughs> I hope this actually is going through. Uh, okay, there we are. Yeah, okay, good. So um, guys, uh, Alexis is on her way. I'm holding the fort down till she gets here. She's in a little bit of a Sedona traffic, but I know she'll be on any minute. And uh, I'm just really happy to be back here with you guys this week. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Sutterbug. Hi, Lisa. Um, Quetzal live in Adriano, Apple's lady. So good to see you guys. I hope all of you listening in iTunes or Spotify tonight are having a great evening. We are about to witness a very large event going down uh, today and tomorrow, the Georgia voting is happening right now. I think it actually might even be, is it closed? Uh, but there is a lot happening. So I'm going to hold down the fort here for all you guys until Alexis gets here. And we've got a really fun show ahead of you. We're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about alien awakenings and uh, the galactic activations that so many are experiencing right now. Um, Alexis has a lot of experience with that and she's had, um, she's found that more and more people uh, that she's been working with are experiencing this. So we're going to talk a lot about that and get into more detail of it. Um, hi Tallulah, hi Rob, hi Riley. <laughs> so good. Hey Christina Love, how are you doing girl? So there's so much happening and um, you know what, why not, you know what, this happened this morning in my alchemy group. Why don't I share this with you guys right now? That way I don't have to do a video on it. It's here <laughs> in the beginning where um, we were talking about, uh, we're talking about how there are many Things cannot hide any longer. The dark cannot hide. Uh, not There's too much light here. And one of the messages or downloads that I got while I was, um, while I was chatting with people in our alchemy discord today was this idea that frequency is actually one of our allies, which is kind of cool because that's the title of the video today of having um, this ally of alien awakenings. But frequency is our ally right now because the frequencies that are coming into this planet, the amount of light that is hitting this planet right now uh, and other planets, but uh, specifically here on Earth where we're residing, is that it's making very, very uncomfortable for anything that is dark or hidden to remain hidden. There are a lot of masks that are falling off and people are being forced to, in a way, show a lot of their true colors. And we're seeing this on a world stage. But one of the things that I kind of you know, wanted to make clear that as we're heading into this great awakening, uh, that as there are going to be people who are newly awakening to information uh, that is going to be... Uh, put out there very, very soon, or it's already out there. Like, I mean, people are already waking up. Uh, what's happening right now is definitely waking people up. But in a parallel timeline or in a parallel reality, I should say, those of us who have already been awakened or have been, I should say, more intermediate awakened, okay? Because we've, al we've always got more awakening to do. But those of us who've been more immediate in intermediate awakening we're going to be experiencing some 
very disturbing truths in our community, uh, in the spiritual community of leaders that we've been following. Uh, and, and, it, and this isn't about anyone specific. This is just on a very blanket statement where people are just, the frequencies are so uncomfortable that if someone's had um, the wrong intentions or they've been more interested in fame or money or whatever the case may be, those people are going to be exposed. And uh, I think true intentions are going to be exposed. And I'll be really honest, I feel like I, I'd like to think that people start out with good intentions, but the human path is not the easiest path to walk and live on. And sometimes we fall prey to these things that uh, this matrix programs us so heavily to fall prey to um, easily. And so know that frequencies are coming in to hit this planet at this time um, to, to basically wake not just the sleeping humanity up, but also those of us who need a good dose of discernment reality. So, um, let me just, uh, I've got to double check here, um, to make sure Alexis hasn't come in because I hate how Zoom, oh shoot, one second. Okay, I hate how uh, Zoom makes you have to like let people in now. Um, so actually, I know what I can do. Let me just do this so I can tell when she gets in. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so frequency is one of our allies and that's important to remember that we're not alone. Uh, we're getting a lot of help and we're getting a lot of galactic help just through the simple um, energetic force of the frequencies coming in. Um, and I think Alexis and I may get into that uh, a little later uh, in the show. So do you guys have any questions for me while I wait for Alexis to drop in? Tallulah, hello, alchemy family. I have to say the alchemy family is growing. It is... Um, it is pregnant with new alchemists in there, and I and I love it. I love seeing uh, new new people in the group, and the family is definitely growing. Uh, for anyone who wants to join, just head on over to my website under the alchemy tab there, and you can join. Hi, Derek. Hi, Lucia. So good to see you in here, Michael Guardian. My. <laughs> Oh, that's a good conspiracy, Michael. I'm not going to say that <laughs> on the audio where, on the audio waves. Um, Riley Hunter, this is a dangerous realm for souls. Only the bravest choose to come. Oh, uh, yeah. And it, it is. It's a, it requires a lot of courage. It requires a lot of faith. And right now we're being asked to have a lot of faith, but not only faith. You need to bring action into the game. You need to show up um, as much as you need to show up as much as you show up. You have your faith show up. Those two have to be equal hand in hand. Uh, Sacred Journey, so good to see you. And Stacy, hello, good to see you here. So, how's everyone feeling about tomorrow? It's it's a little bit nerve wracking. I mean, seeing all those people in DC. Uh, seeing how Apple Maps shut down directions to get into DC. So people who were trying to drive in all of a sudden didn't have a map to depend on, um, you know, which makes me think about, I don't know if you guys are, when you're ever driving, <laughs> you know, how much we can depend on our navigation systems and our phones. Um, but I remember the old days when you're like, okay, when you pass the bridge, make a right and go three doors down and it's the driveway with the globe lamp posts on it. That's the one, that's my house, drive up to that one. And you had to use all these different landmarks to find your way. I kind of miss those days. I kind of miss really having my bearings and knowing exactly where I am and using my surroundings to guide me. I feel like maybe we need to resort back to that because tech is overreaching and, uh, I don't like it. I don't like what's happening out there. Veronica, you are excited and nervous. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Even though I really feel like I really know in the end, everything's going to work out. I really don't know the ride that's going to get us there. 
I don't know which timeline we're in right now. And all timelines, oh, here we go. All timelines are gonna merge to that one, just a matter of which one are we gonna experience. Let me let um, Alexis in. There she is. All right. Ah, good, I can hear you. Let me just make sure the audience can hear you. Can you say hello again? Oh yeah, you're good. You're good. There we how go. Are you, how are you doing? <laughs> Hello. I apologize for being late, but I am doing great. Thank you for asking. How are you? I love your background. <laughs> it looks so much better than mine. <laughs> for it. I'm trying to give you some woodland alien vibes. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, my gosh. Well, um, Alexis, so glad you made it. So good to have you. We haven't had you on the show um, in a year. It's been, I think it was December of 2019 we had you on. I think you were like our last show of 2019. So you're our first show of 2021. Am I? Yeah, and which reminds me, Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> Happy New Year. How was, how, was, how was your New Year? I had the best. I had a great all that all those days from like the solstice until now it was just very like calm i could be in my house i didn't have to entertain anybody or go anywhere i didn't want to go for the first time i think in my whole life so it was very like renewing for me and like alexis's of all the past holiday seasons too because as much as i love people and my family it as i've learned it's a very hard it's, it's hard. It's hard to do these gatherings sometimes. It takes a lot out of a person. Yeah, I was, I, I mean, well, I told a lot of people on here, I spent my New Year's on the phone with a bunch of people in my alchemy program on video Aww. chat. Uh, there's, I think, well, there was like six or seven of us in there. And for four, almost five hours, we were just all chatting, talking about a whole bunch of different things. Um, so that was kind of fun. I got to stay on my couch, which is where I wanted to be. I did not want to leave the house just like you. I wanted really calm, quiet energies on New Year's. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I'm so glad that I got to see you when I was in Sedona. That was a real treat. It I was, was a not treat expecting for me. that. <laughs> <laughs> how, so how's, how's Sedona doing? Sedona's doing well. I was just out there in the world. That's why I'm a little late, but uh, there's more people walking in and out of businesses without coverings and a more confident sort of like, okay, we're over this kind of feeling, which we got to that point once last year, like mid-year, like April, and then everybody got way meaner and stricter about it all of a sudden. So I'm glad. Yeah. It's it's not changed really where I am right now, uh, but it's nice to know. You know, when I was when I was there, that was kind of one of the nice things. The only place we had to wear a mask was Whole Foods. Yeah, which is no surprise because we know who owns Whole Foods <laughs> now. So, uh, but let's get into some of the main topics that we're going to talk about tonight because this is really interesting. Uh, you. Um, You've done a lot of work. You've been working in the spiritual community for a lot. But lately, what one of the things you've been doing is uh, you've been working as an ally of the alien experiencer community and hosting, you know, your blog, Ascension Diaries, which attracts those with heightened intuitive and psychic abilities. And you've been tracking like space and earth electromagnetic weather along with disclosure and planetary anomalies. But you've also found that uh, lately there are a lot of people activating and going through galactic activations. You yes, know? that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to kind of share with us what you've been observing? I would love to for all the listeners out there and so on all of the alien experiencers or anybody who has any interest in the galactic influence of your life it seemingly that topic and that interest is like skyrocketing in in my surroundings but it's my fault too because i've put myself in this position too over the years of blogging about it i've attracted an audience of people who are you know all different ages, all different experience levels, and they all seem to still find this like golden thread in like the 
the work that I'm doing to talk about space weather and doing psychic readings for people and just in, in, in general, just sharing data that people are psychically getting from their dream times and from visitations and from uh, visitations and dreams from the past that they're now seeing like this, like prophetic understanding, like there's prophecy being fulfilled and all these regular everyday people like who are just logging onto social media and so many of them are now like, Oh yeah, I dreamt about this. And Oh yeah. You know, all these reasons. It's just been so fascinating. It's kind of like a parapsychology side of things too, but like really as a personal experience or two, it's like, it's so nice to talk to people about all of these topics. And I've been putting myself out there for years in the sort of the disclosure community. I've gone to conferences about disclosure, alien disclosure, you know, that's how you and I, I'm pretty sure that's the vein we ended up meeting in. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's been a few years of us like watching this group of people too, and not just and working with all these people. And then all of a sudden on my blog, I'm getting messages every day through Instagram, you know, tell me about my galactic history. Tell me why I'm getting visitations. Tell me why, what these dreams mean. And I knew this was going to come, but it's coming now in a much grander scale. And when they came about with talking about the Galactic Federation with the Israeli past um, member of like, I, I don't even remember what his position was. It, he may have been like in the military or was a scientist or something. But that just saying the words Galactic Federation, I had floods of people coming into my inboxes being like, this is triggering me. I'm awakening to this. What does this mean? I just heard about this. And now everyone's talking about it. Like what's going on? So Yes. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm seeing acceleration on a big scale, which is why I made my own, I, instead of doing all social media chatting, because my I bought a phone that's too wide for my hand and it's nice because I don't hold it all the time anymore, which is a good thing. But I can't type everybody anymore, but I'm having to put more intention into sessions with people. And, and so I made a website. I have sessions now for people who want to like comb through their galactic background, comb through all of these dreams, comb through all of these visions and everything. And there's many practitioners out there doing that, but I've just been now like really seeing it's time for me personally to offer that as well to help people because I've learned so much from people like us just by chatting and being in person. But now we can't be in person and do all of this <laughs> as easily. We still can, I'm not saying yes. we can, but it's been an obvious obstacle and, um, it's good. I'm trying. I'm just like trying my very best. I'm being. I feel like I'm being pushed super hard right now as like a foot, feet on the ground, like galactic ambassador or whatever. And it's it's happening fast. It, it is. And what do you think is like? What are some of the reasons for this happening? Like all these activations starting to flood in. What What are your some of What are some of your thoughts on that? Well, I think even just the words and the sources where those words and those keywords are coming from, it has a like, a, they're like trigger words in a way. And so people who maybe never have considered Galactic Federation as a real thing, maybe they heard it in Star Wars once and that's why all of a sudden they watched all the Star Wars movies and they don't even really know why or you know, all of these people, uh, generations, they've made TV shows about all this stuff. But then now that they're putting in the news from like military officials, it's starting to get real with people. And then it seems like as well, people who are online and social media, all of a sudden talking about spiritual concepts, just are nonstop also talking about groups and beings like the Pleiadians or the Lyrans or the Arcturians or the Venusians or people in the inner earth or people who are from our past, people in Egypt, Atlantis, Lumeria, all these words are just like boom, 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 boom. It's just this word map that's happening when people are looking into like the great awakening or into disclosure. And now it's like, Oh, you don't know about the Pleiadians? How do you not know about the Pleiadians? And I didn't, I didn't know the Pleiadians were a thing until like the last, like, I don't know, nine, five, no, like seven years, maybe not even. But everybody, it seems like I talked to is like, oh, yeah, I've heard Pleiadians. Am I a Pleiadian? I'm like, you probably are. <laughs> like, well, it's the closest star system. Most of us have to come <laughs> through there to get here. So you may, you may have, you may have made a pit stop along the way. <laughs> exactly. And these are the things that I've heard and I know you work with them and you work with other groups and you've had now guests on the show and I've I have like been so excited to see the guests who do talk about this stuff and are 
galactically channeling groups and so on and just bringing breadth to this topic where it's Mm -hmm. been such a very I'd say like particular narratives that they've been trying to do in the ufology community and so on and I'm glad to be a young person in that community because it's easier to be like this is stupid just crash it down be like you guys that's old you guys can just toss that we're over that right now let's I've got I'm talking to somebody who saw an alien today like (laughs) it just it's funny to me and I think that there's just a whole community and a whole narrative and weird ties and people who are lying and cheating each other and it's just getting messy and it's like we don't need that anymore because people are getting visited in their dreams and making YouTube channels about it and it's just so amazing to see. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because there, there's always been a lot of drama in that community, you know, and um, I find that very interesting. Uh, but there, I think that what's happening now is so many people are starting to have their own personal experiences and um, being active in many ways that I feel that that is going to start flooding in and overshadow a lot of the old stories. Not that those don't have a place. Of course they do. It's history. But (laughs) um, I feel like that's going to, like, there's going to be, well, it's going to be hard to maintain a narrative when so many people are coming up with the same stories, you know? (laughs) Yes, that's a good point. Um, So what kind of... um, You said, like, you're talking to people who've had encounters with ETs. What are some of the more prevalent encounters that you've been um, hearing about that people have been sharing with you? I think the most effective thing that I've been watching happen is not so much uh, a physical ET showing up or even in their dream time, like, you can actually see what they look like. Most of the time, it's people seeing a craft first they see a craft in the sky which can be many things in a way i've now learned but uh the stories are usually like i had an experience i saw a craft i felt it in my body and that's another big one where it's not just you're witnessing something like watching a car drive by on the street when you see and witness these craft it's this whole magnetic electromagnetic experience and most people have an experience if if it's even if it's just your like your anim, animal brain is kicking off like oh like you feel a response to this item and in your reality and then that's when i've noticed there is more that's like the first permission I've pointed out craft to people in the sky. I'm standing next to them and they're, they will look over at it. And then it's like, like their brains and their consciousness just cannot engage. And you're like, okay, you're not going to just sit there and watch that. All right, that's fine. And that's like that first permission slip. And then I think when people really are, are, if someone's like, oh my gosh, I see it. I see it. That's like a, a permission slip. And then, the dreams tend to be the next thing. Or if you're a, me- a pro- proficient meditator, I notice uh, third eye visions will be another one where when you close your eyes, you almost see like this out of like an invisible wall. If Even if you see black behind your eyes, you're seeing face all of a sudden when you're meditating. Oh, there's a face and that's not a human face. And it's smiling at me. I've seen that so many times. I have many tra- conversations about that. But dreams is another one. People literally just being brought onto ships by ETs, brought out of their house during emergencies, brought onto ships, being shown their rooms, uh, reuniting with children and family and blah, blah, blah. Like I've heard, I've heard people in now the mainstream ET disclosure group talk about these things. And then I've just randomly found people all over the internet who, and I've asked them, have you heard these other stories? No, this just happened yesterday. You know what I mean? It's just, It's so interesting. And there is a pattern to it. And I think that's another part of what I like doing is like noticing kind of like the patterns on how this behavioral experiment is going to be happening. Because I think that that's kind of what I'm understanding is going on is this is like a, you know, a grand experiment, a grand school of intergalactic contact now. It's just like, it's it's getting real. Like it's Mm -hmm. getting real, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I mean, Trump's now just made it so that in six months, all agencies need to disclose all information about UFOs. Oh. (laughs) 
Yeah, in six months from now. So there's a timeline. <laughs> Can you hear that for all of that to come through so yeah it's it's about the dial is getting turned up here uh so I, i'm curious you know because let's talk about then the activation part because we all hold codes within our own body within our own field and if i'm talking to you you could you you wouldn't even necessarily have to say anything just being in your field could be holding codes that would activate me um i know that and and i want to say for everyone out there in the audience this doesn't mean that you have to be with someone more awakened than you to get activated no 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 i've been around people who i know who they are but they're still very much asleep or kind of awakening but not really and holy crap the uh, activations that I've received from being around them is just some of the some of the most intense ones. So do you want to kind of talk about that? Let's go into the activation codes that each of us holds and the different ways that we're engaging. Sure, I would love to go into that. I have been teaching a class to explain space weather and also teach about our toroidal electromagnetic field that we have because I find that understanding that awareness really helps with uh, this explanation exactly. And this is kind of the evolution of it is your electromagnetic field is kind of just this beautiful toroidal field around you that is coded specifically from your DNA. Like it's your unique little flower in a way, in my opinion, from my understanding right now. And there are many unique flowers out there and many different codons and so on in the DNA that are activated, unactivated based off of environmental factors and from genetic factors. So if, for example, if somebody literally flew here from Alpha Centauri and walked out of a spaceship, let's just say, walk past you in Whole Foods, their electromagnetic field, which expands about you know, a few feet on either side, which is another part of the six feet apart thingy, in my opinion, is almost like a quarantine or a, a cleaning process of your own electromagnetic field, too. It's kind of nice in, in some form. People are getting a little bit of a cushion or a break now because our auras really are this wide for most, most if you know, if you're healthy. But if somebody's walking past you in the store and they're from Alpha Centauri, boom, their DNA from their environmental situation instantly is interacting with yours just by being near them electromagnetically because it's all a frequency thing anyway. So it's such a magical thing. So going into these groups like with a topic that is about disclosure or about ETs or about awakening or about spirituality or about trains, like whatever it is, like you go into those groups and you're your DNA and your field are literally going to be influenced by those people. And if you have a direct incentive to be with people who are also psychically training, they are doing uh, psychic surgeries and they're doing energy work as well. They've kind of learned these more subtle ways of doing energy work and they've, they are experiencers of ET contact, physical, non-physical dream time. Some of them are astral travelers, projectors. Some of them are channelers. Some of them are who knows. And you will become more like those people just by being around them. And also you will also activate and be reminded or remember certain things about these certain desires you have to learn about yourself or to grow within. And so... It, it is a major thing. The environment is a huge factor of who you really are, which I thought is really interesting to, to learn way back. And it still seems like it's a big part of it. And that's why learning the space weather is so important too, because it's informing us all the time and changing our DNA, in my opinion, all the time on subtle levels and sometimes not subtle, which is why the blog is fun because some days it's really unsubtle and a solar flare comes and everybody feels like they're dying who is an intuitively sensitive person because most people follow our stuff are people who at least understand what we're talking about, right? They have mm -hmm. some experience points in what we have made more of our like public platform of what we talk about and share with people and teach people because I don't know it's just our personal like passion but I, I being not being able to gather with people is 
who you really want to learn from is a crime. And I, I do want that to be coming back really soon. And when, when we have the chance uh, where it's, I don't know, whenever you and I or someone else figures it's time to make a new event, there's events on the way all the time. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's been a funny year and I've been observing that. I'm trying to figure out why, like there is this grand question, like what is this experiment really? What are we really doing to our bodies? What is the plan? Cause I've had this galactic understanding, like, and I keep feeling like they have a say in the matter, like it's a part of this. And so I thought it was so funny that that came out in the news and now ET contact and everybody's telling us it's happening this year. And I'm seeing memes everywhere. It's hilarious. So, <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because I hadn't thought about the aura aspect of the six feet social oh. distancing. Um, I actually, it's, yeah, I'm actually like, Nicole, why didn't you even think of that? How come it didn't even cross your mind? <laughs> well, there you go. We just exchanged a code. I know. Well, you know, it was interesting because when we were in Sedona chatting, I think it was you and Jason, Trisha, and um, and, and, and it was just the, the, the five, I think it was the five of us. And we were just chatting and it was like each one of us, we would say something, the other person just instant download, instant download. Someone says another download, another download. It was just like, whoa, it was such a, it was such a wild couple hours just sitting there talking with everyone because it's like we were all activating more wisdom or more knowledge and, and, and it's like you're unlocking, you're unlocking things in the process, which is, which is so cool. But this Perfect. idea of, this idea of, um, you know, why it's important to, you know, when you were, okay, let me, let me go back here. Mm. You were talking about this, this thing where people feel called to be in a different environment or needing to be somewhere else or maybe around different people. And, you know, a lot of that we hear about, well, the energies on my energy just doesn't resonate here anymore and it doesn't, but maybe part of the orchestration around that is because your body's getting ready to be activated by codes held within people who do resonate with you. Yes. And that's part of the calling is that you're getting ready to be, to activate. Well, you're getting ready to activate others. People you're getting ready to be activated by others. It can happen in so many different ways. I think some people think it's got to be some sort of healer who works on you and just like <laughs> activate. <laughs> I wish. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. I know I know. I believe that when I was first awakening. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, 1-800, activate my DNA. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about some of the weather then that you've been noticing that's created some major activations for people. Um, all right. So one of the biggest ones I would recall it's most more recent one most people listening probably know was the the december solstice that we had on the 21st was a big one where i was seeing it in cosmopolitan magazine forbes you know it's all over facebook all the magazines and publications were like oh this is happening the grand conjunction the planets are going to align and the christmas star even and all this stuff, this this shift. And to me, it's kind of funny because I'll notice events that are are like solar flares. And we had a solar flare, um, I'm trying to remember, I think at the end of March. And people I know died during that solar flare because it was so energetically intense. In my opinion, it's an opportunity almost like surfing a wave to jump on the solar flare and people will and pass on and move on from this avatar or whatever and then there's these events that they publicize and that is more for the mind in my opinion so there's some that are that are happening that they don't report or tell us about as much and that's when people like me and you will you know hear about it amongst each other and be like yo there's a solar flare that just happened and that's probably why my crown chakra blew up the other night and i couldn't sleep for three days or whatever it happens and but it's not in the news they're not going to publish it in you know what i mean like new york could you imagine you turn on like i don't know <laughs> cnn and they're talking about crown chakras exploding <laughs> this was a really crown chakra and uh, solar plexus heavy solar flare 
that's just that's what you get on instagram and youtube it's just a little, it's just a little different it's just a different yeah. world but it would be great and you know what i wouldn't doubt it that that's going to happen one day i, I it would be it, it has to perfect. but hopefully hopefully during that time cnn doesn't exist anymore <laughs> Yeah. Or like some kids are just going to take it over and just, it's going to become like a rebel base. Okay. So <laughs> with the, with the solar weather, that's all mental. It's more of, it's a different type of awakening. And this is like, it's a, it's an allowance in my opinion that allows the masses to finally engage with the fact that there are cosmological events going on that may have an impact on your life that it has almost a magical effect is kind of where it goes. It's like, Ooh, this is a magical thing that's going on, which in a way it is. Um, to me, I see it as a, a, like an electromagnetic, one of those like balls that has the like lights that go all around, like a Tesla ball where you touch the outside. It's like, it just seems like that to me. It's like energy's overlapping on this side oh, right now and over here. And it's, it's not as magical, but it is because you don't always know what's going to happen. And that's the fun part. And so knowing the weather, it helps you know what days to look out for, for global events on a, so, a social level, on a political level as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, tomorrow, for instance, yeah. Mars, Mars moves into Taurus. And Mars hasn't been Mars has been in the same sign Aries for almost seven months. So long. You know, so long. So this is a big shift. There's a shift happening because it's a new energy, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, th that can ha that definitely uh, starts to influence a lot of us in many different ways and how our energies will uh, interact with uh, this particular reality. You know, you mentioned social media, and you you and I were chatting in uh, in in Messenger uh, before about how you've been seeing activations through social media. Do you want to talk about that? Because that's very interesting. Sure. Yes, I've been talking about this on my channel. It seems like quite a bit. Uh, social media and uh, cryptocurrency are two big things that I'm noticing and being watching very closely. But also crypto doesn't it, it's I'm still it's like the feminine brain doesn't quite like crypto yet, in my opinion, like, <laughs> but we're getting there. But with social media, which is, you know, they discuss all these topics, of course, but there has been there was such a major uh, campaign of programming during the political time that we had this last year during this, at least in North America in general. That was a very intense political time. And I'm watching what age groups are being attracted to certain social medias. And I've been watching them very closely and how they've been communicating to people or censoring people, which, of course, we've seen a ton of. I'm not going to focus as much on that right now, but it's what I have, what is being allowed is more of what I was focusing on instead of what was being taken away, because that was a little bit easier to predict <laughs> yeah. what was harder to predict was like while these guys are being put in the penalty box what is being pushed out there and i was watching all across the board all age groups especially on platforms which are controversial but tiktok was one of them which was a big one i've talked about that a few times there is children that's probably the most popular app with children here in north america for sure and there are a few second skits, there's usually music, there's usually text on the screen, but always there is an algorithm involved with TikTok. And so there's beautiful, organic, cute people making cute, funny things. And that was what was livening people during the lockdown, in my opinion, was this organic, creative energy that people could do and make us laugh with. And then sprinkled in there was propaganda about, um, and in specific, it wasn't about one or the other for the most time, most part, it was specifically against one group. And then there would be a wave against the other group. And then there's a wave with the group again. So there's just waves like we're talking about masks. Everything you flip through every third one is about masks and lockdowns. And then the next day it's about Kamala Harris. And then the next day it's about Trump. And the next day it's about and it was or it would go into the UK. You know, they would also sprinkle in UK politics and Australia politics in there but it, it was upsetting too because you're watching this you know most kids are on this app and this is what their tiny little brains are being fed right now and it's very 
intensive. It's a lot of sensation at once for somebody who is, I don't know, anybody who would be consider themselves on the spectrum of autistic behavior or anything caused by vaccine injury or whatever, genetics, too much that type of stimulation I find is very, very intense and overwhelming. And it's, it's being aimed towards more ADHD, ADD type where there it's a lot more fast information and a lot less thinking and a lot less feeling. And it's just constant dopamine hits and so on. And I've just been observing all this. I mean, I've watched social media start and, you know, evolve for the most part. I, I didn't have a MySpace because they weren't as popular in Canada, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was there for my, like the whole thing really. And it's just been, it's been tough. And so now I'm watching witchcraft and I'm watching star seed stuff and great awakening stuff and all of that stuff being fed into social media, especially TikTok. But it's coming through and all these new faces I've never seen, all of these terms I've known for quite some time and talking about during virtue and all these old books and there's a lot of knowledge sharing happening in this type of medium too and it's going in there it's being it's being digested faster than even what I was digesting by reading blogs every day about you know channelings and the great awakening and drops from military insiders and all that stuff it's like happening faster it's like you can watch it in eight seconds and then you're on to the next drop and the next drop and the next drop and it's or the next witchcraft thing the next uh spell you can curse on somebody like they were literally encouraging witchcraft craft across the entire app against certain candidates in the in the election i watched it what are you serious yeah. they scheduled it they shared it around uh it was all over the place and i was just like this is insane and then i'm like it's funny because people schedule mass meditations during like you know solstices and it's a similar vibe but it's not because it's like it's witchcraft it's dark against yes. a person <laughs> yeah it's dark magic it's not white magic it's not at all and it's just funny how excited they get it's like they're doing something good and they're getting people on board and it's like we're gonna just <laughs> destroy this guy <laughs> And yay, TikTok. And you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's wow. so intense. Uh, it was intense to watch. And uh, recently put it on a separate device. And I only have it on a device that's not attached to the internet anymore. <laughs> so I can use it when I need to. But it's like compartmentalized. Uh, because it's it gets wild. And with what's going on tomorrow. And what is obviously going to continue happening this year. Mm -hmm. It's an overwhelming field, but Twitter is similar to that, except it's less videos and just more of anything that crosses your mind can go out there no matter. And you can have millions of followers and whatever just shoots across their mind or gets programmed into their profile influences the minds of millions of viewers who are just reading it. And it's just dumping into their subconscious too, because they're half of them, the stuff they're not even reading. And, um, it's, social media has been an intense issue <laughs> with misinformation and mind control and so on. But it's also we've also been able to use it as like a counter effort. And now we, you and I are having conversations like this on live stream and people are watching and it's awesome. So, well, yeah, and I mean, and that's that goes with anything. There's always dark and light in, in all aspects of everything in yeah. this reality. Uh, you just can't have it any other way. And we have to learn how to be responsible <laughs> with our energy, with our words, with our time, and how we're going to utilize things or allow things to utilize us, uh, which is a really scary thing. Um, now, you've found that a lot of people, you've, you've experienced this year an influx of newfound contact awakening people, like people who've had contact or they're going through their awakenings. What is the overall, or I don't even know if I want to say overall, but what's the energy coming out of that awakening, that initial awakening that you're seeing? What's been great is that the awakenings I've been seeing no matter who they are, what country they're coming from, there's a lot of similarities. And a lot of the similarities are feeling more support, more connection to the universe, more passion and feelings of responsibility and ownership 
of being an earthling as well as now possibly uh, an earthling that has experience in other places as well. I'm noticing it's a, it's a big confidence boost for a lot of people as well, because they've felt weird all of their lives. Of mm. course, we've heard this hundreds of times. You feel like a stranger, you feel like alien in your environment. And then all of a sudden there's a lady on Instagram that's talking about something that reminds you of a dream you had as a kid and boom, I'm they're in my DMS, like telling me their entire dream. And what do you think this means? And I'm like, it means that you're, you know, you're awesome. And like, you should dream more. And like, there is communication happening. And what did that dream make you do in your life? And do you want to dream more like that or less like that? And uh, it's giving people confidence. It's reminding them it's having them have regressions, especially childhood regressions, and also uh, regressions of times of who they were before their awakening and they've they have seen that schism and people are fresher to the awakening are like i'm a whole new person than i was even when i awoke from i don't know whatever it was recently that was the biggest awakening maybe maybe it was 2021 or whatever that's what woke them up and oh my god i'm a whole new person i didn't know the galactic world or i didn't know this feeling in my body, this energy, all of the sun is coming out of me. I have passion for the world and for life. And it's a beautiful thing. And people just want to know more. They want to know more about who they are so they can remember more, feel that feeling of confidence, embody their soul more, in my opinion, their exper experience, their Akashic record. And they want to share and they want to, they want to change things because they've been deeply uncomfortable deeply uncomfortable and no one's brought up any of this stuff to them until they were some of these people far into their adulthood and they want to get started right now. There isn't a minute to waste. Mm -hmm. They just want to move. Yeah. I, I, I feel that too. You know, there COVID has been an activator for a lot yes. of people. Yeah. True. Uh, I mean, <laughs> and that's why everyone's at home. Like they're thinking about it. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, because I know quite a few people that have activated just like right around the time this all went down in March, uh, yeah. people were activated and it's, it's interesting how it's cause I actually have seen it do two things. I've seen it activate a lot of people. I've also seen it take people into a deeper slumber, which is, I guess, what fear will do. It just shuts down all of your heart. It shuts down all of your emotions that are feel-good emotions, you know, that may be more expansive and wanting to explore. Right. And it just keeps that reptilian brain on all the time, not allowing you to critically think. Um, so for you what was the what do you find covid is activating the most well <clears throat> i think it's interesting that they decided to call it the coronavirus because again yes. previous to this virus viral epidemic i've already we've already been hearing about a wave of energy that's supposed to be hitting us waves of energy that are supposed to inform us, enlighten our consciousness, open our hearts, make heaven on earth. I've heard this from so many speakers and that's why I made my blog Ascension Diaries because I was like, I'm going to figure out if this is real or not, but I'm going to make this my life pursuit. I want to know if this is real, if we are really having a global environmental experience where all of a sudden our consciousness is awakening. And to call it Corona is beautiful because Again, that is what they call the sun. They saw they call it the corona. They also call it, it its crown in English. Corona is crown in English. So crown chakra is the area which all of these texts say when you complete, you know, your alignment as a spiritual being, all of your energy centers are aligned, your crown chakra opens up and you have, you know, a deeper connection with the entire universe and so on there it's it's all over the place it was all over the place before i was born it became extremely popular with this new age thing it's everywhere all of this information and i'm just watching to see if the patterns line up and so to see what what this virus was called it was like okay 
we knew there was going to be something that's going to happen that was going to change everybody's lives forever. We knew that all the establishments and everything were all going to be shut down and things were going to change, but we didn't know what was going to cause it. Some people thought a literal solar flare was just going to fry everything. <laughs> and all of the wiring in everybody's house, phones, everything was just going to be shot. And that was what was going to cause the issue. But interestingly enough, a, a viral epidemic was what was chosen as whatever and the pressure and the change that it caused people to totally get torn out of the the cog of the matrix the constant pattern of getting up getting in your car being in traffic going to work going home that same stuff for so many people that just stopped mm -hmm. and it was a beautiful thing because it was so no one to blame like it was such a an interesting idea that you were doing it for the safety of everyone. And that is such a, like a benevolent, in a way it is a very benevolent reason to shut things down and go home. It doesn't cause people as much pain and suffering. They get it. There's a little bit more understanding in my opinion. I thought it was a brilliant, a brilliant twist. And the more I sat in it and the more months and weeks I went by, I was like, this is it. Like this is the sh the shift that I was waiting to watch and happen. And there may be more shifts like this, but this is definitely the biggest one I've seen in my lifetime and was yeah. like capable of seeing or getting some type of warning beforehand, you, you know, from like 2012 to like then, <laughs> really. And ugh, it's just been such an interesting phenomenon in that it's still going on and people are still feeding into the lie and still waking up from the lies. Like there's been so many opportunities for people to wake up from the lies constantly and there's releasing of data up to people who are looking for it to give them other opportunities and other arguments against the mind control and there's just this whole soup of knowledge and awareness that you can dip into and i think that's why so many people are waking up because they're home most of them are home on the internet now and they have questions and people are sharing information and it's just been a, such a beautiful time of a re-education for so many people and people who were awake before then knew and were ready and have been in support. We were already home. We already left the matrix. Most of us just barely, we made it out. And then it, it pooped anyways. So people who were like, we're going to hold on. We're going to wait a little longer. Some of those people just had to literally get kicked out of their jobs and become the light workers they're supposed to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there were some stubborn people out there and I was like, ha, like that's what you get. I told you three years ago, you should quit your job and now you have to quit your job <laughs> and be a psychic. Just like uh, we talked about years ago in your session. And I had a few moments like that where I was like, Thanks, totally. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I just want to say a big thank you to Christina Love and Sutterbug for all the the um, super chats. I really appreciate it, both of you. And so let's just finish off here then with the importance of elders and children right now. Because uh, I know that's something that's important to you. Uh, do you want to kind of finish off the show with highlighting their importance at this time? I would love to. I am just want to shout out to all the people out there who are elders to other people and who are children to other people. There is both those positions are so extremely important and to have mutual respect and support of both of those perspectives is such a whole picture and healing thing that I really want to, I don't know, I want to have in my life. I want to manifest more of this in my reality. I want to see people really feel responsible and have that pride of being an elder in the community. Even at my age, I'm still an elder to others. And I know that. And I, when I see clearly that I'm around people who I am an influence for and have wisdom for, I'm honored to be there and be a support and teach and listen and hold space and heal the youth because I, they in turn will give me so much by just telling me their perspective and their story about all these phenomena I've heard now many times. I'm glad to give them some other, other stories and other perspectives to share. And that's the beauty of being an elder is having some experience, but the youth and the, like the, the innocent and the children also have new things to give. And, and um, that, that sacred exchange, I feel like it's what does occur 
in in the more balanced society and we've had many structures where it's elder speaks and children listen and that's it and that's the only delivery system of information and i think that's caused a lot of a lack of confidence now as a, as people are now elders that child in them just still doesn't feel like they're safe to speak or that they have that authority or that responsibility even to speak because they constantly will see somebody better or older than them in their world. And so they'll be like, well, that's their job. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed that a lot. And I've also noticed a lot of elders be really rude and condescending to beings who are also wisdom holders but who they appear or perceive as younger and youthful of them. And instead of seeing them as up and coming or learning and aspiring and passionate people like them to mentor and support and give advice and like hold their hand, you know, when you know the times are tough, there's this, there's this distancing and this competition I'm seeing as well. And I'm just, pointing all this out because I just wanted to run it through people's minds really and just consider that and encourage you to really feel confident and prideful and being the elder and being in the awakening community for more years than than other people and lending a hand and speaking kindly to those who are new because so many new people are coming and we need the elders to stand up and offer more lighthouses in my opinion too like more locations in communities and stuff even online communities just being that point person that holds that space so people who are awakening being like well this person's you know i can talk to them and i've seen a couple of their videos or whatever and i trust them i get them i think i can they can hear me and understand me and then i want that privilege as well as a learner from the elders in my own community people who have walked the earth longer than me that is such an amazing like accomplishment even in my own mind like living on the earth sometimes is so painful so painful and i look at people and they're like i've been on the awakening journey for 30 years or 50 years and i look at them and i'm like how how have you done it how have you not offed yourself like sometimes <laughs> it's just that it gets that bad and I, you're laughing i know you know what i mean but it's just like how did you do this for 50 years like and now it's happening you were waiting this long and it's happening now i'm so grateful that i didn't have to wait that long and and they have so much wisdom to give me about how to survive and be grounded on this planet while they're waiting for this like galactic, I don't know, shift of consciousness and all this. And if they teach me how to do that and they have, yeah. it's amazing. And so I'm just, just want to fortify that more in, in the minds of the people who are listening for some reason. I just feel it's very important right now. Yeah. Like I remember I was, my awakening kind of started in like the late nineties but I, I think of those who were awakening in the 60s and I'm like, oh yeah. my God, that's a long time to be waiting, waiting for everyone to catch up, you know, because a lot of us, you know, once you awaken, you're like, how do you not see it? It's right in front of your face. And it can be very frustrating. Uh, but that, of course, is part of the design. It's part of the plan, right? Like they play that role specifically for you to get frustrated <laughs> um, and learn more about yourself and the journey. And I think, you know, you saying that I've seen that a lot where we've shut down our children and um, prevented them from speaking or sharing. And I'm seeing the consequences of that in many of those who are awakening right now and using their voice and using their gifts and being able to be more forthcoming with that. And I the good thing, though, is that because of that and then a desire to want to overcome that obstacle and that challenge, I'm also seeing parents becoming more giving with their children in the sense of giving them more latitude to express themselves, not shutting down those gifts, allowing them to express freely what they're thinking. And it's, you know, even just spending time with my niece over the Christmas holidays when she just started talking about you know, Santa coming from where aliens come live, you know, I just, I was like, 
<laughs> what? <laughs> we were talking about Santa and now we're talking about aliens. And um, it just, I was like, oh, tell me more. I want to hear more. And I just, I didn't want to influence her in any way. I just wanted to hear what she had to say. And I think that's a beautiful place to be in where we can just be receptive to those who aren't, they're, they're, they're coming from very innocent and pure places of knowledge and wisdom. I also have noticed they have sensory sensitivities that we lose as you age, which is also really helpful. So they'll, and the way that I'm noticing the younger generations all have like a new way of sensing things and communicating things. It's like a generational thing. So it's very, it's been very interesting to watch. I'm sure it has something to do with like the cohort of like people born under a certain Saturn sign, you know what I mean? Like that generation or like under a Pluto sign or something perhaps, but it's, I, it's, it's constantly like new data coming in, like from these new souls in a new, in a new way. And it's your, your niece sounds like she, she totally gets it. And so I want to know more. That's, I want to talk to the kids more. I genuinely do. Cause I just want to hear what and how they say things and how, they're coming to these conclusions because it'll be different than how I did. And um, well, well, she when I asked her how she knew this, she says, well, I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. the best. I would never have said that. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, OK. <laughs> so I love that. I love the confidence. I love the boldness. I think we I think we definitely need that in our generations coming up behind us. Absolutely. Yes. And so I did not want to shut that down at all. Um, but um, there was something else I just wanted to say here uh, before before we go. Um, what before you got on, I was talking to the audience about the um, the frequencies that are coming in and the frequencies are, uh, I got a download this morning while work, while um, in my alchemy program in the Discord today mm -hmm. about the frequencies are actually our, our well, we kind of know this, but to, for it was kind of said the frequencies were always part of the plan and are your allies. And they're disrupting the darkness, making them very uncomfortable so that they slip up and can't be as, um, oh, for lack of a better word, sneaky or coy or... Um, right, clever clever yeah um and it's forcing them into a lot of discomfort which means they're acting out in different ways that are not normal to them uh have you seen that like i guess through your weather reporting and energetic reporting yeah and my own body yeah. <laughs> you know i thought things were gonna get easier i was like yeah i'm for sure i'm i'm so emotionally balanced like i got this and it was just like no apparently i did not got this and so the frequencies whatever they were and this space weather it, co it coincides so beautifully and so it makes sense i'm glad that it did and that's why the blog kept being interesting because if it didn't then that wouldn't have lasted very long at all but the solar wind that comes in you know the coronal holes the solar flares the even just like days where stargates are supposed to be opening like lion's gate or so mm -hmm. on days like this, it's constant. And people will either have a great day, I find, and they're energized, they're making videos, or they're doing readings, or that's kind of my life when I'm energized. But when I'm not, I'm barely able to move, and I'm grouchy and angry, and I'm crying, and we're my, my husband and I are bickering nonstop and having debates of and tearing apart every single little possible issue with everyone's sentence like it's it's just nitpicky and it gets really really intense sometimes and it it makes sense that that is actually in a way what's happening is that there's all these little tweaks that seem to be happening and every like frequency wave comes in and it, it's like a a different dose of us or like a song that plays and this song makes you feel this good and this song makes you feel like this and um depending on your tastes and depending on how healthy you are and I'm definitely not sure about what the dark people are up to. I have not felt them as much. It feels like the people with the dark agendas are really not as much of a, in the place of power in, in my psychic ability to like feel into the world. I don't feel like this dark 
rip on us or anything like that. I feel like most of what we're seeing is like a, is like a movie. It's, it's playing out in a logical way in front of us, but so much of the darkness has already been moved out of here. It's, you know, you, you, you nailed it there. Um, I don't, I, I, when I, when you say logical, I would say more of a typical movie screenplay, (laughs) you know, like the way movies are done, this one is playing it to a T. Uh, whenever you watch movies. And I want to say I'm a little curious because yesterday on Twitter, I saw, um, you know, I think Tori mentioned, well, you know what, maybe it wasn't even on Tori. No, it wasn't on Twitter. It was in her last live stream yesterday at the end, at the very end. Um, She mentioned, oh, and wait till you guys see when Jeff Session reappears, you thought he was done. He's not done. He still has a role to play and wait till you see how he comes up. And I'm like, Oh, well, that's just another part of that movie theme, you know, where like the character that you thought was like long gone and doesn't have any more importance in the movie comes back and maybe like steals the show. Who knows? Like, and and I'm like, wow, okay, like there's more popcorn needed. (laughs) Oh my God, I know. That is such a good point. It's true. And the people, I, I know that there's also people now who are in the know of the story and the movie and they're getting this like excited knowing feeling and they're tweeting about it now now we're getting tweets from people who are possibly more are getting some like teasers about what's going to be next in the movie what's the next episode going to be about what is it going to be about and people are getting dreams about it too you don't need to be uh, on the insider sometimes because all you have to do is sleep at night and then boom you're going to see an explosion and the next day the lebanon building blows up mm-hmm. i had quite a few people actually have dreams like <laughs> come reach out to me i was like yep yeah, this is good with the important stuff that comes through somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm curious because um, I've had several people mention this to me and I'm experiencing and I'm curious if you are, or you have some insight into it. My dreams almost always lately for the last month now are like intense, stressed out mission work, like either trying to get something completed, trying to escape, trying to, um, avoid something like it's just it's got this dark layer to it of intensity that I don't ever usually have or if I do it's just a one-off dream but this has been almost a month ongoing have you been hearing that or experiencing it yourself have you been have you been sleeping okay <laughs> you know when I am sleeping I'm sleeping okay <laughs> but um well, I, I should say it's only in the last week that I've been sleeping better, but the dreams are still intense. Um, yeah, and I, they well. don't feel like my normal dreams. That much I know. They don't feel like my normal dreams. Yes, I have. I have been experiencing that too. I've a I, similar an escaping dream. What used to be one of my one of my go tos. I would before I kind of awoken to all of this was escaping, and I would duck out of one house crawl up the walls out of windows like just getting away getting away in a tight neighborhood but this dream i could not get away from this thing it was just like it was telling me i couldn't even like what was the point i couldn't get away from it yeah and that's never really happened to me before where this like this entity thing that i was trying to get away from had like this hold on know, you hold on me or this like what's the word uh they're feeling very confident in their ability and for me i was just like that's not usually my deal usually i just get away and i yeah no problem i'm having ones where i go to scream because someone's come in the back door of my home and i go to scream and nothing's coming out and i'm just trying so hard to scream and nothing and then i'm in, in that same dream um this person's showing me on a piece of paper that they found my address in a trash bin and this person was kind of homeless. And, and then the next thing I know, like there's two male postal workers who are putting packages through a doggy door, um, in my, into my home. But as they are, they're kind of holding the flap up to scope my place out. And I'm like looking at them going, what are you doing? And it's just, and then they just kind of drop the flap and I'm like, what is going on? And I guess now as I'm speaking about it, I feel like I'm being, my my energy is being cased out, like scoped out. Yes. 
I I would say that that was also what I was getting from that. And I've been having that too. I've been having that uh, experience. People coming in my house. The biggest issue was honestly people coming, breaking into the restroom when I was using the restroom. Like that was a big one. And then I've been able to push that back a bit. Oh, now, now I'm getting people who are banging on my door, but I'm not answering the door. And it's like, okay, we're getting a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> but I've, I've had to just basically make myself wake up. I'm, I've been being like, that's enough. And I'll just wake up and it's 5 a.m. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm done. I'm not going to go back into that thing where that thing thinks it can find me. I'm not going to run through more buildings. Like I, I'm over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, I don't want to go back into that. I feel, I, I'll be honest, I feel like I'm in some overlord timelines that I don't want to be in. <laughs> like, some yeah. sort like it just, I don't like them. Um, and I'm so, you know, it's one of those, you know, you know how you have dreams where you're like, oh man, I didn't want to wake up from that one. Like these are the dreams where I'm like, oh, thank God I'm here. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, okay. But let yeah. everyone, let everyone know um, if they'd like to work with you, if they're having these um, kind of awakenings to their own ET, uh, their own ET awareness or, or whatever it is that they want to work with you, let them know how they can get in contact with you. And of course, what you've got going on. Sure. I'd love to. Well, I have just launched a website, ascensiondiaries.com. That is my blog title. So on all social medias, I'm Ascension Diaries. And I now have a website and on my site, I'm offering sessions with people, really intensive sit down sessions. I do tarot readings with people to kind of engage psychically. I now have a star seed deck as well. So because all the readings I've been doing with people, I just end up sitting there getting information about like your galactics and your guides and all this. And I'm like, I need some more. I need some more help here. I need more words and help. So I have more decks of cards and more words to help this information come through so we can kind of, you know, really quickly and also in a big picture, get some things sorted out so you can really start to move forward and feel confident and speak out and feel like, yes, it's time for me to talk about this. Like it's okay. And so on. And that's been nice. All of social medias have been good. Um, <laughs> uh, my most popular are Instagram and YouTube. I go live on Sundays and Wednesdays. So if you'd like to sign up on my mailing list on my site or hit the notification bells on those, you can reach me. I'm also hosting a class on January 9th about the Schumann resonance and space weather. So if you've been watching the Schumann resonance and or space weather stuff, solar weather this year, or recently woken up to it or just want to join anyways, you can go to my site, go to classes, you can sign up there or message me on social media. It, I'm just going to do 25 question and answer about it. It's going to be a less intensive class. It's going to be all of the beginner stuff that you'll need to know and how to read the charts for yourself. And then it's just here to empower you. So if you want to track so, this weather yourself and you don't want to follow anyone like me, um, you can get all those links and I will help you. Like, I just want to empower people who are intuitively sensitive, know that this weather affects them or their family members or their pets and just give them the tools they need to be empowered to, to use them because um, it's becoming extremely popular. And although these tools aren't always accurate and aren't always honest, and I complain about that often, and that'll be in my class as well, showing you where there's inconsistencies in the public science. Either way, and I'm doing my best. This my passion is to help and be of service and also, you know, share a lot of codes that I have from literally face to face talking with dozens and dozens and dozens of experiencers who are talking to all different types of groups and a lot of them are also talking to the same groups which is very interesting so you know I'm, I'm here for it if you need if I resonate with you and you want some help the space is available for you and yeah just join the join the blog if you're interested and uh, oh. I'll be around <laughs> awesome well, I highly recommend Alexis. I've known her for a few years and uh, it's been amazing um, watching you grow and and seeing where we've come from and, and all of that. So that's been great. So thank you to the audience for being here. I love you guys. Let's all hang in there, see what happens tomorrow. Um, it's not over yet. And I think uh, there's still more interesting interesting twists and turns to come. So hang in there and we'll be back with you guys